to the Clydesdale Media Weight Loss Journey, where Scott does his weekly check-in with nutrition coach Cheryl Nasso every week live on our YouTube channel. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notifier so you first know when new episodes come out. Sit back, relax, enjoy the show. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Clyde Zone Media Weight Loss Journey. Another week in, another week recovered. I I'll love it. Where we're at. Yeah. Let's talk about the, another week. How's the weather up there today? Yeah. Not if, good. If you look out the window, you think it. So it's first day of spring. Mm-hmm. Um, you think it's full spring. You're going to go out in your shorts and your tank top. And you walk out and the wind will rip you apart. I was going to, it's, you know, it's funny. It's really windy here too. It's actually, the weather's beautiful today, but it's really windy, like annoying windy. It's, it's a cold wind. Yeah. We have a cold wind too, but our cold wind is, is beautiful wind for you. You'd be like in heaven right now. So for sure. It's a good time of year in Florida. Corey so. says what I'm feeling. Hey, Judy. Hey, Holly. Ken. Hey, Corey. Hey, what a gentleman. Hey, just addressing everybody. What a nice guy. Yeah. Judy echoes my sentiment. It's freezing and windy here in Columbus. Yeah. So you let's let's just start with that. You and Judy met up last week, correct? We did. First day back at the gym. Oh no. First day back at the gym. Oh, how was it? Judy is straight up savage. Is that a compliment? She killed the workout. So that's a compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I've met Judy before. So, yeah. like, she came to Masters Fitness Collective, mm-hmm. cheered, cheered on Corey, cheered on Jamie. Uh, so, we got to hang out there. But, man, she's fit. Yeah, so, I, like, being called a savage, you can kind of take that one of two two ways, you know? Like, in my head, you you picture, like, the, like the Tarzan person, like, oh, you know, like, just ravaging the food. So I do have to say at the end of the workout, so we go back and my first workout back was a 40 minute workout. Saw that. I'm like, wow. Judy okay. looked at me like, what have you done to me? Yeah. And so when it was all over, she said, we need to do this every couple of weeks. Um, but let's look at the workout before we decide. I love it. Yeah. Well, so you went back to the gym on Thursday, um, and I know that that was kind of taking you into the weekend. <clears throat> you get another workout in there at all since Tuesday? Since- I, I did Friday. Awesome. And what was your workout uh, on Friday? Uh, the Open. Oh, that's right. So did you do the workout? I did. What did you end up doing for scaling? Uh, I did a 15-pound empty barbell. Okay. And ring rows. Love it. And... So, first of all, Thursday crushed my legs. Yeah. Crushed them. Uh-huh. Then to do thrusters, even with a 15-pound empty barbell, hurt so bad. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, I got through the first five rounds, mm-hmm. and that's about it. Got it. Well, I think... So I went with months. Brooke Wells and Tia Toomey. Well, just, just to give you, like, think about, that's, that's 50 reps of 100 reps more than you've done in a long time and and two days in a row of pretty high volume. So that's a lot. And then what was your weekend like? Did you get any fitness in over the weekend? So I did something Sunday um, in my garage and then, um, and then I took yesterday and today off because work has been. Okay. what did you do Sunday? Um, I just did a little 2159 of the bike because I needed to get some lactic acid moving. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and then I did uh, sandbag cleans. Okay. And then I got back on the bike when I was done, just to like super slow, just a flush. Got it. Gotcha. Well, how are you doing with your steps? Because for some reason, on my Apple Health, when I try and look at your stuff, like it's it's giving me like your averages, not your actual dailies. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm looking at wrong. Um, how have you been doing with your steps? I've been okay. Um, hit seven a couple times. Um, and then a couple times it doesn't, but 
What's bizarre is like I went to watch Rudy do the open on Saturday and I took pictures the whole time. Like I was on my feet moving for a good hour plus and it barely registered any steps for me. Yeah. When you're standing, it won't. Well, I wasn't just standing. I was moving all around in the rig and even me, like I'll be, I'll be cooking in my kitchen and and I'm standing and moving around, but it's just not registering as actual steps. It's it's fun. That happens sometimes. I believe that you're probably on your feet. Um, and or <clears throat> I also notice if I'm like pushing a cart in Publix, that's a grocery store for all of y'all that aren't from Florida. Um, it doesn't register if you if it's if you're pushing the cart. Hmm. It's like I'm wondering if it's from me holding the camera. Yeah, that's what I, it, it could be. Because like I said, when I'm pushing the cart. It doesn't register. So just just kind of funny. But uh anyways, so all right, so that's good. We got you back in the gym. And but so let's get you back in the gym this week again. I know that work is oh, yeah. busy. Already so, committed to tomorrow and Thursday. Awesome. Did you get any gym fitness? Did you get any fitness in at home? You said you took this week off so far, right? Nothing in. Well, I worked out Sunday. Yeah. So just Monday, Tuesday rest. Yeah. So you're gonna work out the rest of the week, probably. Yep. Did it feel good to get back in the community again? It did. It did. Good. good. Um, the only weird thing is my coach wanted to talk to me so much because his dad had a fit. <laughs> then oh. like in the middle of my workout, he's trying to ask me questions. <laughs> it's funny. I was thinking about that because we'll, we'll go back into you in a second. We're having issues with the lawn, uh, the lawns at our, at my, in my community a lot of the grass is like dying. And at first I thought they weren't turning on the irrigation, but my neighbor comes over and tells me yesterday or no Saturday. She's like, Hey, I just want to let you know that the reason the grass is dying is because there's no soil. It's all sand underneath the grass. And so it's dying. So the reason I'm telling you this is because I'm in the middle of getting ready to start 12 by 500 meter rowing in intervals. And like, y'all know how painful rowing intervals get. And she doesn't understand CrossFit. So she's coming over and she's like starting to talk to me about the freaking lawn. And I've got my headphones in and I can't hear. And I'm on like a one minute rest. And I'm like, listen, lady, I can't talk to you. And I felt so rude. But if you just don't understand CrossFit, you don't understand it. And then she's still trying to talk to me about getting it. I'm like, I'm like, I'm sorry. I can't figure out how to turn my headphones down. I can't hear a word you're saying because <laughs> I really couldn't, but it's just funny because nobody gets it when they're not in the CrossFit world. Like we just don't stop and talk in the middle of our workouts. So. Yeah. And I think, I think he was worried about me and just keeping a close eye on me. And so he was coming over to ask me like, cause his dad had just gone through it and yeah. wanted to make sure like I was okay, but. Yeah. yeah. Can I just, can I just take a little detour and tell Kenneth that he must've went to the wrong Publix because a pub sub is like, that's like one of the best things. If you come to Florida and you've never had a pub sub before you're missing out, Kenneth, I just don't, I don't know that we can be friends. That crusty bread. It's just, it's amazing. I uh, just, you know, I don't know what kind of pub sub you had, but did you ever have a pub sub when you lived in Florida? I don't think so. Oh man. It, the bread, first of all, the bread is, it might as well be a loaf of French bread. That's pretty much what they give you. It's probably about the bread alone is probably about a hundred carbs, <laughs> but the just something about them sandwiches, man. I don't know what they put in them. It's, it's a good sub, but. So yeah. Damien has had the interruption during his CrossFit workout of solicitors. Well, that happened to me too that day, but I was stretching. So it wasn't a big deal. This, I'm getting a lot of uh, people coming to my house to sell me things like bug spray and lawn care and water stuff. And did you hear about the FPL bills going up? You should invest in solar. And I'm in the middle of stretching and the guy doesn't want to interrupt me. So he says, do you mind if I knock on the door and see if your husband's available? I'm like, I don't have a husband. Oh, surprising. I'm like, why is that surprising? Like the guys are trying to make conversation, but I'm like, why is it surprising? I'm like, I'm not. So anyways, but that's when I swing my kettlebell and say I have grip issues. Yeah. I told my mom about it. My mom's like, Cheryl, you never tell somebody that you're not married. That's dangerous. I'm like, dude, do you know who I am? 
just some funny stuff. Corey says, look, lady, I'm about to die on this rower, and I'd much rather do it without you yapping in my ear. That's Cheryl, probably how I felt. I was like, oh my God, woman, please shut up. Please shut up. Ugh. It's it's but I get a lot of I mean, I walk on my hands on my sidewalk, so I get all kinds of people asking me questions about what I'm doing around here. I'll be pushing my sled and and the construction workers like, you go, girl. And I'm like, thanks. <laughs> thanks, cheerleaders. But anyways, so all right. Back to what this is about, Scott's uh, weight loss journey. So we're getting you back in the gym. Um, weight trends are looking good. Um, how are you? Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. They look consistent. They look great. They do look great. How are you feeling? Are you? Let me ask you this. Are you noticing feeling differently? Yes. Hunger, cravings, energy. Uh, definitely hunger. Yep. Um, not necessarily cravings. Um, but I feel, I just feel like my joints just feel better. My, everything feels better. Even sore after a couple of days of working out, I felt yeah. better. Well, the movement is medicine. I will say that, um, for sure. I'm seeing a lot more whole grains. Looks like you're starting to make your own English muffin sandwiches in the morning, which is good. Seeing some veggies some fruit. Um, just pizza. bought whole grain bagels. Yeah. Pizza's your thing. It looks like you're getting in on the, you had pizza for Friday night dinner. Yeah. And then leftovers on Sunday. Yeah. But you did have, you also did have your salad with it, which I like. Listen, here's the thing is a lot of people like to think about what they're removing from their diet. And, you know, life is all about balance. And if you're eating, 80% of your diet is coming from lean proteins, fruits, vegetables, and things like that. You should be able to incorporate some pizza, some things like that. But more importantly, what people should be thinking about when they're having those things is trying to balance it out with more of those nutrients. So I love the fact that on Saturday when you did log it, I also see a salad with that as well, which makes me happy. So um, <laughs> it's funny, the name of your chicken sausages it says Seymour. That's what it says. Oh, wow. Like Seymour. Like, I don't know. I just, wasn't there like an old movie, like a joke about like Seymour, Seymour? Well, there was a, there was a cartoon-ish. Yes. Yeah, like, cartoon. Seymour, the sea six sea monster. No, there was one also like Seymour butts. Oh, what that. is that from? I can't remember, but it's, yes. Kevin remembers. I don't know. I'm feeling old right now, but I can't remember. Um, oh, is it from the Simpsons? I don't know. It might've been from the Simpsons. I might be thinking of the Simpsons. If y'all remember that show. No, I'm really aging myself, but yeah. When it's you're on Cheryl. Is it really like it's new? Show? Going. Yeah. Like, like new there's new there's, oh my gosh. Wow. Um, see, I was right. See, Judy even says it too. I was right. The Simpsons. Okay. Yeah. It's funny here. The name of your chicken sausages says Seymour. It just made me think of that. But uh, I'm seeing sweet potatoes. I'm seeing homemade pizza with the lavash. Chicken shawarma. Was that homemade or did you get that somewhere? Hello Fresh. Oh, how is that? It was really good. I've actually never had that, but I know a lot of people that like that stuff. So overall, looking really good. Seeing some popcorn in there, which I like. Um... I like the fiber. People often don't realize that popcorn, especially if you're making it yourself, guys, it's just corn kernels and you can literally air pop it. In fact, super good hack is if you take your popcorn kernels and you put them in a paper bag, you can make your own microwave popcorn. That's all you need. So don't you make popcorn, Scott, or do you buy it? Yeah, you make it. How do you make yours? Do you have an air popper or do you... Uh, so I have, uh, it's a, it's a contraption that you put them in and yeah. it has a arm that stirs the kernels uh -huh. and then it just starts popping and you flip it over and the top is a bowl. Well, that's fancy, but literally all you need is a paper bag. 30, I'm bucks, 30 bucks on Amazon. I'm serious. You take a paper bag and you can, you can, if you want to, you can spray them with like cooking spray. It's going to add a little bit of fat, whatever. 
put a little butter in there if you want to, um, salt. You can make your own like caramel, whatever kind of corn you want to make. Put that in the microwave and it pops just like pop, like you would. But popcorn is really high in fiber. There's like, a, I think per about per 25 grams of carbs, I think there's four or five grams of fiber in it. So it's a pretty good source of uh, carbohydrates, people. So. So Judy wants to know the date deets of my weight loss. Okay. Let's I'm going to put it to you in this framework. So I went to the doctor on Friday. Even more. Had a huge bill of health. Like things are going great. Keep up the good work. On their scale, I'd lost 14 pounds mm -hmm. since the first time I met with her just three weeks ago. That's awesome. So the same has happened pretty much on my scale. It is around, it's like 13 point whatever pounds. I'm at 285.6. Let's just go ahead and do this. I'll just pull it up for them to see. Y'all can see Scott's progress right here. That's what things are going on. We're, we're seeing this nice trend down, uh, which I like. Obviously, it probably will start to slow down a little bit as life gets back to routine. Whenever we have big changes, we're going to see big changes. It's just the way it is. If you make big drastic changes, you're going to see big drastic changes. And I think you had a bunch of things all at once between medication changes, between you know, your life just kind of being turned upside down. We're making a lot of nutrition changes right now with the fiber, with the veggies, but things are looking good. Again, I feel like we're back in that smooth and consistent pace. I um, like the term great better than good, yeah. but okay. Well, I like thinking about, uh, here's the deal is I'm always like, what I want to say is, the reason I don't like to get hyper, things are going great is because I don't fully think that we should be so up and down with a weight loss journey, whether it's going good or going bad. Does that make sense? Meaning like, it's good to celebrate the wins, but we have to realize that oftentimes when we celebrate the wins and we're like, things are awesome. We often tend to do the exact opposite, the exact same thing, or the exact same thing when things aren't going so good. And so when, the reason I say great is not just about the weight loss. Yeah. The reason I say great is five weeks ago I was in ICU. Yep. Yeah. And where I'm at today is great. Agreed. Yes, I would agree. Not just the weight, but the way I feel, the way I'm able to move, the way I'm able to sleep. All of that stuff has changed dramatically and I'm feeling great. And I love that. And I want you to say that, but I don't want it to be like, oh, things are going great because of scale. Because I, I like that, but I also think that. And I love Corey. I don't I don't know what it means to be Joe Biden because I don't pay attention to politics, but I'm not thinking that's a good thing. So um, everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. I would 100% agree. So, and, and that's the thing, like what, Judy, what Judy just said. You're telling me things are going great. I'm not telling you things are great. Like I want, I love that your feedback is good. That's what I actually want. And you did an open workout, which is awesome. So really yeah. good. So what do you have going on this week? You're going to get some workouts in at the gym, Polaris. Yep. Right. Okay. So noon, noon time is going to be your time. Yep. And I actually, last week I took the initiative to block out the noon time on my calendar. So nobody will schedule me in the future. I love it. I have to like, I had to get rid of a meeting yesterday and today. Well, Tuesdays are going to be the round table all the time, but right. Yesterday. And then, so now that'll be free for me going forward. Awesome. Um, how is your blood sugar? It is in the one twenties now. Okay. That's it good. Been dropping about 10 points a week. Okay. And she's super, she was so excited about that that she's already talked about like backing off the insulin. Good. Um, what we just have to get down like another 10 points. Okay. And then backing it off two units at a time to okay. help you can get rid of that. And then it'll be getting rid of the metformin. Yes, which I really want you to get off of. That's medication is literally. Uh, something that we could go into a whole nother topic on, but um, it is what it is. It is <laughs> nothing you can do about it. So you're just going to get off of it. So 
Um, and heart and everything like that is going good with being back in the gym. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, like I'm still making sure I'm not like cranking the heart rate way up anymore. Mm-hmm. Or right now, I mean, um, so I'm trying to keep it like 120. Okay. Is like you know what I mean? Okay, that's that's good. That's like a zone two ish, right? And then as I keep going, I'll leak it up a little bit at a time. Well, and, and here's when when we're measuring when we're thinking about progress being made in the gym heart rate isn't really what dictates that. Right. So it's like, I know it's really easy as CrossFitters for us to get focused on like the intensity and how hard I'm, how fast I'm going. And am am I, you know, getting that intensity piece, but honestly, that doesn't give you the results that just like consistent strength training and moving well and moving through sets with the intended stimulus of like, I'm getting 10 unbroken reps you know, I'm doing that stuff is so much better. You could EMOM your way fit, like seriously, it's not going to be competitive, but it's going to keep you in a good place. You know what I'm saying? Like you can back off the intensity and make a lot of gains in your fitness, in your strength, in your mobility and all that stuff. The intensity piece is like the top that's icing on the cake, you know, but that's not really what creates the results. That's what creates that okay, now I have a new level that I've reached and now all my percentages have to go off a higher number, which sucks. <laughs> That's what I always feel like, you know, like you hit a new 2K road time and now you're like, all my road times are going to go go faster. You hit a new back squat PR, a new snatch PR, you're like 90% my old one rep now. It's like that the stuff that, you know, comes with that. But that doesn't, you don't need that to get fit and to be healthy, you know, so um, in fact, I'm, uh, debating on doing my level four and I was just kind of earlier today going through the old journal and there was one of the level one journals was talking about the whole, um, you know, doing CrossFit, you know, when you don't want to do it for intensity, you want to be able to just be fit and healthy. That's okay. It's part of CrossFit. So I actually made a comment to somebody like CrossFit is good for everybody, but not everybody's going to be the right fit for CrossFit. You know what I'm saying? It's just. So you can do CrossFit. You just have to take away that, you know, need to be intense. Just a little side tangent. But Judy says, being back around active, like-minded people helps for sure. Um, I 100% agree. So it's why even on the days when I know that I can just do a workout at home, I still try and get to the gym. Like I've been trying to make sure that I get to the gym at least three times a week because otherwise I'm like the lady with her cat. (laughs) I'm the cat lady at home that just does nutrition coaching all day. I mean, my clients get to see the most of me, but you know, just me and my cat. So I got to get out and see people. Yeah. Um, yeah. So my goal right now is three days a week until I can get my schedule cleared and then back on yeah. trying to get back to five. Yep. Um, the only thing I'm going to mention is this week, your protein has been a little bit on the low side. And I don't know if it's just been uh, like not thinking about it. You know, it might just be your lunch was a little bit low protein some days. So I would like to see a little bit more protein. Um, you know, like you can also make sure that you're getting a high protein snack in. You know, you used to be pretty good about before di- before bedtime having something uh, because your proteins have been definitely a little bit on the lower side. I th- that's the only other thing that I really want you to focus on this week. Yeah, I did. I did get some rice cakes and some lunch meat. Mm-hmm. Go back to the lunch meat, rice cake, and laughing cow cheese yep. thing that you taught me a long time ago. Yeah. And then I did get some oatmeal to start doing the oatmeal pudding have you tried the cottage cheese pizza dip? I have not. Okay. I have a recipe and I'll send it to you. Um, and if you guys, anybody on there that doesn't like cottage cheese, little hack is put it in a blender because it takes away the little chunks. Um, but you put literally cottage cheese, fat-free mozzarella, um, a little bit of Parmesan cheese, marinara sauce, turkey pepperonis, put it all together, pop in the microwave, put a little Italian seasoning in it, 
and I take the Joseph's lavash bread. You can cut it into like squares, dip that in there. Now you've got a really nice high protein snack. It's also high fiber. You can use other, whatever you want to, you can use pita chips or whatever, but something high fiber um, would be great. And that's a really easy high protein snack. I think the recipe that I have that I'll send you, I think has like 40 grams of protein in it. And it's only got like two to 300 calories. So super easy, high protein snack. If you're looking for something salty, you know, I love my Greek yogurt bowls, a little bit of vanilla protein powder in those. Uh, but I, I think that what you need to be thinking of with your, it's, it's really your snacks. Uh, Cause your main meals are usually about 40 grams of protein, which is pretty good. Um, but I think that like your one or two snacks, you need to be like reaching for like, where's my protein first. And, and if you're going to, cause you might just be like, I'm craving something salty. And the easiest thing is like, how can I add some protein to this? You know? So that's where I think that the rice cakes is a good idea with the turkey. Um, cottage cheese is great. Even some things that people don't think of. Like I, like I told you, I've been getting down the tuna, like the tuna salad with the mayo or the, the Greek yogurt. That's been a good, easy snack for me. Um, and you can even make it ahead of time. You can make like a buffalo chicken dip. So any of that kind of stuff would be easy to have. And you can dip that and you can even get some more veggies in that way because you can make a dip like that and use like bell peppers or the tuna salad and use some bell peppers or carrots or cucumbers, any of that kinds of stuff. Okay. So that's going to be, that. that's the only thing that I really want to see is more protein because I definitely feel like that's where you're lacking, but everything else looks pretty good. Calories are in a good spot. Um, how about your gut? How's that been? Uh, much better. Okay. Now the doctor did say that she, so I'm still, I was still having the cough and the, the congestion. So she changed my allergy medicine all, all together. And so now I'm, I'm, so I was on Zyrtec. She took me off that and put me on Claritin and then Singular at night. And we're giving that two weeks to work. If that doesn't work, she's going to check my gut health because it could be that that's causing everything that's going on. But I'm not burping like I was. Okay. All. all right. Um, Okay. I think that everything else is looking pretty good. Um, like I said, I think that protein intake needs to go up a little bit. Your meals are pretty balanced for the most part. Um, you tend to balance out your calories a little bit. Like there's, you know, you're never really hitting your carbs. You're always going a little bit over on fats and a little bit under on carbs. I really think that if you optimized your carbs a little bit more, your fiber intake would go up and it would also help with your blood sugar a little bit. And but getting in complex carbohydrates. So like more sweet potatoes, you know, fruits and vegetables, that kinds of stuff. Um, but if your guts and if your guts still giving you trouble, like that's what I, I'm going to say again, is getting the fat intake down a little bit, but really what I want you to focus on this week is getting the protein up. I'm not, because you're keeping your calories in a good spot. I'm not really that worried about the macros of carbs and fats, as long as we're getting the protein up and your calories are staying within control. So I want to speak to Jay Birch. Grits are nasty. I lived four years in the South, could never, ever get used to them. You know, I've never had grits before. Go up to the panhandle. I've never had grits. Go all before. over the place. See, my family, we live in Florida, but they're from New York. So they're not like into a lot of Southern food. They're, they're like, my mom is like, you know, they're Italian in New York and just, they're like not into that stuff. So we did not eat grits growing up. We had pancakes. We didn't even eat oatmeal growing up. Like I tried it a number of times because I thought it was healthy and I never liked it growing up. <laughs> so definitely. Didn't. What every single person told me this exact phrase, every time they brought me grits, mine <laughs> are better than any ones you've had. You have, they haven't been cooked correctly, blah, blah, blah. Nope. Sorry. There's a lot of Southern food I've never had, like chicken and waffles. I've never done that either. Now that that's just way too good. I've never done that before. Either. Chicken and waffles is her top ten food of all time. Yeah, never. I didn't didn't do that either. So and that I will only buy in the South because they really know what they're doing. Yeah, 
Um, there's another thing I used to eat growing up. Have you ever heard of pastina? Hmm. It's this like really, it almost looks like couscous. It's like really small pasta. And literally we would just eat that covered in Parmesan cheese and butter. Like <laughs> just, it was so good. But I, I think that might've been like a Pennsylvania thing. It's like a, I think it's like a New England thing. Well, that's fun. That's where you're from. I don't know where it's from then. So yeah. maybe you would have had that. So, but uh, I know one that you might know of. This is a gross food. Anybody that knows this food might think it's gross, but well, do you know what Scrapple is? Yeah. Oh, that's from like the nor Northeast, right? That's a Northeast thing. So it's, I know it's a Philly thing. Yes. Um, When I, when we went, when I, so when I went to visit Kat, she lives in Delaware, just South of Philly. She bought me a Scrapple breakfast sandwich. My grandfather used to love that stuff and it smelled so bad when it was cooking. Oh, and then I remember like in towards the end of his life, love my grandpa. Um, I was like the only one that would cook it because like my aunt was like, I don't know how to cook that stuff. And he likes it when you cook it and it tastes it like smells gross. That's gross. Food. Yeah. yeah. It's not something I'd have every day for sure. No, um, probably. And I haven't had it since I've not been out that that way. Yeah. But yeah. I know what it is and I've had it once or twice. Oh, can I just, can I just start by making a comment here? I'm going to bring this up right here. Heidi mentions, has Scott considered pure carnivore? Guys, oh, the world of dieting is just disgusting. Disgust, like it just makes me so like angry for people that are just trying to be healthy. The extremes that we think we have to go to in order to get healthy. What does eating only meat, having only meat in your diet really solve? Is that really a healthy diet? What is that going to fix? I mean, think about all of the nutrients you're missing. Talk about gut health. I mean, it just, to me, is like, I just can't even. And you might feel amazing on a carnivore diet. That's great. But the health benefits of carnivore diet are slim to none. And there's a lot of research that shows that. In fact, you're limiting yourself on so many of the nutrients you could be getting. Um, and it really is like for some people, they need to just go to that extreme, but it doesn't solve any of the problems. It doesn't. And then you're going to have the vegans telling you, why are you eating meat? Meat is going to make you sick. You know, and then you just, it's ridiculous. It really is. I really do find that the extremes in this world with dieting are unbelievably ridiculous. And at the end of the day, most people that do diets end up going back to doing something else. They'll live a lifestyle for a period of time and they shift, you know, and I love what Philip just said, just do whatever works for you. Something sustainable. Absolutely. Absolutely. It should literally be that. And I will be honest, Heidi says, it, I did it for a limited time, solve my joint problems. I'm not sure. Okay, how I call it disgusting. I think it's, I'm not calling the diet disgusting. I'm calling the fact that people are selling these diets as the solution to inflammation, to joint problems, to, over, to obesity, to blood sugar from the diet. Do you know why they all work? Because they get people to remove the shit from their diet. They're controlling their calories. They're getting more protein in. And guess what? A lot of their symptoms go away. Has nothing to do with the actual diet. Now, I'll be honest, diets that add things in, like you add in more protein, you add in more fruits and vegetables and fiber, often do have a lot of health benefits. That's my opinion. And I'm going to just make this a really controversial show today, aren't I? <laughs> I'm just very opinionated on it. I am. Right. You have to go with what, what works for you. Yeah. This is working for me right now. Balanced diet. Exactly. I've tried, I've tried everything under the sun in my 54 years. Me too. Um, and so this is what's working for me. Um, so there it is. I'm somebody who followed a paleo diet for years because I thought that it was going to be the solution to like my gut issues, 
like I was, I was petrified that I was going to get like leaky gut and all this stuff. And I literally like stopped doing that. I added food back in and felt better. <laughs> Everything improved, but I still believe that that type of a diet, whole food based diet is how we should all be eating everything in balance. Have I ever tried carnivore? No, and I don't plan on it. Because even here's the deal, even if people were going to use an extreme diet to actually get the systemic benefits of something like that, you would likely have to be doing it for like a year plus. And I am not willing, nor do I need to completely remove all the foods from my diet in order to get myself healthy. And nobody does. So and I, and I can say I've tried carnivore before and before we met, like I said, I've tried everything yeah. and, uh, I, it wasn't sustainable for me. It's like the people that are like, Oh, fasting works. No, it doesn't. You likely are controlling your calories. You're losing weight. And guess what? Less fat in your body, less adipose tissue does help remove the chronic inflammation. You know, our fat cells is where we store everything. Again, when we're talking about this diet, like people are like, have you tried carnivore? How long have you tried? How, how long have you tried it for? Why? What is the purpose? When we talk about trying a diet, what are we trying to achieve? Right? Like that's the goal. What, why are we going on this diet for? So if there's not a purpose for the diet, why do the diet? In Scott's case, but once again, what is the purpose if he's losing fat, if he's improving his blood biomarkers, why would we make things more restrictive? Like, that's my question. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, you're doing great. Hey, let's go ahead and remove everything from your diet because we just think you need to do that. I just, this is, this is what I mean by people are just... It doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any sense that people would go to such extremes when they don't need to. No worries, Jake. You missed the first half of the show that when Scott was talking about how great he feels. So, and just to answer, I, when I tried it, I, I made it like three months, um, but it just, it wasn't sustainable at that point. Dude, I did whole 30 for like six months. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, why? You know, so I do believe that we should all be getting in enough, but I just think the extreme dieting world is just, and I'm, I'm going to be off on a tangent. I think this needs to be my, my next podcast is the people that are talking about these diets are usually selling you something too. By the way, buy my ancestral supplements. I shouldn't even use that word because I don't want it. That's a good company, but by my, these beef liver tabs or this or that, that's going to help with this and that it's all a marketing game, you know, like it's, it's, it's just as bad as the freaking medical, the medical companies, the same, the same people that are feeding people pills are feeding people Oreos, the same companies, you know, they're coming from the same places. Oh, here to have this Oreo, but let me go ahead and give you the medication. that's going to help you with that too. It's like, it's the same shit, you know? So Anyways, but so just just to recap and, and bring this ribbon around the, the, the package. Because now you got Cheryl all fired up right now. We were down 14 pounds since the hospitalization. Blood sugar is back down into the 120s, um, which is really good from where I was at. And it's on a downward trend. Um, weight loss is still on a downward trend. And... Um, I'm feeling great. I'm back in the gym. I am back to working out. I'm back. My joints are feeling great. Um, and we're just going to keep on trucking with what we're doing. And I'm going to say one more thing. Okay. Cause first things first, I don't want anybody getting offended by my opinion. And here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it at this. If you're following a diet trend and that works really well for you, that's great. But I'm always going to be the honest person that tells you why a diet works. Okay. Likely you're getting more nutrients and less of the crap and you're controlling your calories. Okay. No matter what all that stuff is, my approach to nutrition 
is one that I want to be realistic with my clients with that they have full-time jobs, they have kids, they have families, and their kids are also watching what they're doing and what they're eating. And what I teach is meant to be balanced because life is meant to be balanced. We should all be able to enjoy things. And a lot of people on those quote unquote diets, whether it's carnivore, whole 30, that was me at one point, live for cheat meals. They live for cheat meals. They they literally, they're so happy, but they, they still have to have that. It's my cheat day. Guess what? We don't cheat on our food because there's no, there's no cheating on what you eat. So my approach to nutrition is meant to be one that makes a person feel excited for their meals, not restricted by them. And I know that if a person is eating enough nutrients and they're controlling their calories and they're getting their movement in throughout their day, they're going to be healthy. They're going to be lowering their inflammation markers and they're going to be living a lifestyle that they can sustain forever. And that's what I'm going to say to end. So what I want to say is, Heidi, don't be sorry. No, don't be sorry. This, this show is for, I want to have open discussion. Agreed. Where we can talk back and forth about why you think that's a benefit to you, why Cheryl doesn't, and we can have a, a, a conversation about it and not just shut people out. That's what this show's about. Um, and, and that's fine. We're all entitled to our own opinions. And I've tried a lot of things. And I've done, I used to weigh over 500 pounds. I have lost 300, almost 300 pounds, gained some back. I'm on the track back to losing the weight again. The first ways weren't sustainable. This is working better. It's slower. It's more methodical. And it's more sustainable for me. Yep. And that's why I choose this. Yeah, I would say I agree. And I also want to, I want to thank Heidi because guess what? If these topics aren't put out, I can't educate people. So your questions help me help the people that might be literally living in a diet prison. It might be really sustainable for you, but there might be somebody else out there that thinks that they have to eat that way in order to see results. I got clients that are afraid of eating bread or afraid of eating carbs, or afraid of eating this stuff, being able to show those people that they don't have to live that way to get healthy and eat and, and see results is what I'm passionate about. So if it works for you, great. I, I'm so happy that it works for you, but I just wanted to make sure that I also said that as well. So I want you to, I want people to ask, I want people to challenge me for sure. And now I'm going to have a podcast episode on it. So we're going to do it. Um, whoops. She said, to be fair, I have been eating more sourdough than usual. There we go. So you're, yeah, it's good. But anyways, guys, I got to get going because I actually have a, a call with somebody in a minute. So I'm excited for that call. Thank you, everybody, for the input. This is an open forum for everybody. We love you all. And with that, we will see everybody next time on the Clydesdale Media Weight Loss Journey. Thank you, everyone.